I want to welcome all of you again this morning, and we are in a series that I have entitled Signs, simply entitled Signs, and what we're doing in this series of teachings, we are taking a look at the signs that Jesus said would be occurring in the last days, and in fact, just prior to his return. Now, in this series, we've already looked at two of these signs that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24. You may want to turn there and follow along. I'll be using a couple of verses from there today. But the first sign that Jesus said that we should be aware of was spiritual deception. Now, I would encourage you, if you missed that, I would encourage you to go back and go online and listen to that message. I've stated this several times now, but this one is the one that concerns me the most. Because, folks, not only is there spiritual deception out there in the world, there is spiritual deception all through the church of the Lord Jesus. People are believing things now that are not biblical. They're standing on those things. They're arguing and debating over them, and they're not even in the Bible. And if you're watching closely, you realize that the devil is deceiving many, many people, Christians and non-Christians. And the second sign that we talked about is wars and rumors of wars. I'm sure you've at least heard about what's going on in the world right now and the threat of nuclear weapons and and all kinds of things. There's activities going on all over our world. A lot of people do not even realize this. Right now in Cuba, and I won't give the name of the other country, is working right in Cuba right now with some very threatening things toward this country. And so we are hearing of wars and rumors of wars. That's in the headlines. But the third sign that Jesus talked about is found in Matthew 24, verse 7. He said this, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Now these things are not going to be everywhere. He said they're going to be in various places. What did he say? For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Now, as generations reflect on the past, true history will have recorded our time as a moment when mayhem rocked many parts of the planet, perhaps on a wider scale than ever before. What I'm going to do is just lay a little foundation this morning about these truths, and then I want to explain to you why each of us Or on this earth at this time. Continuing on it says. For natural appearances. From all natural appearances. It looks like an array of nations. Races. Religions. Political parties. And listen to this. And ideologies. Is locked into a a collision course. Against one another. You're seeing that if you're paying attention to it. As never before, it seems that nations are rising against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. Now, in this teaching, what I want to do is I want to explain in further detail both of these phrases, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And I believe you'll begin to see more clearly what Jesus meant by these statements that he made. Now, despite all the uprisings today of one faction against another, it's worth noting what historians have pointed out about the time of the New Testament when Jesus prophesied about the clashing of nations and kingdoms. Now, in reality, nations were already rising against other nations, and kingdoms were already in conflict with one another. Now, Jesus knew that, yet he said, "...nation shall rise against nation." And kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Now this is when knowing the Greek language uh, is, really comes in handy. It, it, it explains things that maybe we lose in our English language. Now the word shall is used twice in this verse and prophetically points to events that will occur in the future. Not to events that were already happening in Jesus' time, or in that day or hour. In other words, Jesus was predicting that nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom shall rise against kingdom. He mentions that in Matthew, it's talked about in Mark, and it's talked about in Luke. Now this rising against describes upheavals, confusion, 
disorder, turmoil, and instability that will be stirred across the world at the very end of the age. Are we not seeing that to some degree? And here's what it does. It depicts a seething among the nations as a clear and authenticating sign that we are nearing the end of an era and that Jesus' return is very near. Now, I don't want to jump too far ahead of this because I'm going to talk about this at another time. But folks, I don't know if you realize how many times in the Bible Jesus said, my coming is quickly. Jesus said that 2,000 years ago, numerous times, just in the book of Acts. I mean, the book of Revelation. And so, I really believe this. Uh, uh, if it was, his coming was near then, what do you think about the time we live in? And I encourage you, don't be of those who scoff at this and say, Oh, you Christians have been talking about that forever. I don't believe that stuff. Well, um, Maybe you ought to open your heart and reconsider some of these things. Because I believe it's true. Jesus, or Jewish rabbis of Jesus' day, taught that in the time just before the coming Messiah, conflict and wars would be stirred in the world. These rabbis declared that when we saw kingdom rising against kingdom and one realm against another realm, it would be a signal to expect the imminent arrival of the Messiah. Now, if you understand Jewish history and you understand the Jewish people, the day that they were awaiting for was the first coming of the Messiah. Sadly, and I'll read a verse in a minute, they missed it. They got it wrong. And that's the reason... I always caution Christians to not feel like you got everything figured out about the last days, how it's all going to happen, how it's all going to pan out, just because you got a little chart. Just, just be looking. Jesus said this. He didn't say try to figure it out with a chart. Don't argue and debate. He said just be watching. Be watching. Be ready. Be ready. I'm going to come when you least expect it. How many of you have thought about, no, no, you don't have to raise your hand, the coming of the Lord this morning? Or... There's several of you did. God bless you. I was busy preparing a sermon. Many did not recognize Jesus as the one that they were waiting for, nor did they recognize that it was their day of visitation and that, in fact, it had already arrived. If you go to the uh, nation of Israel to this very day, uh, they don't believe that the Jesus we worship is... The Jesus, their Messiah. They believe he's yet to come. Now they're expecting him to come. And they'll tell you that. And they're great people. But they don't believe that the true Messiah. Now some, some do. But it's a small majority. But let's read it in Luke 13 and 34. It says, O Jerusalem. Now this is Jesus. Crying out for his nation and for his people. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Listen to this. The one who kills the prophets. They killed a lot of prophets because they didn't like what they said. And stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. Listen to this. But you were not willing. They weren't willing. They had it all figured out in their minds how the Messiah was going to be and what he was going to do and how he was going to take care of the Romans, get rid of them, and he was going to establish an earthly kingdom. Well, he's going to do that at some point, but the time for that was not then. Nonetheless, these rabbinic teachers correctly predicted that chaos would emerge and increase among the nations as a precursor to the end of the age and the coming of the Lord. Now, there's something else very important in the Greek that adds even more meaning to this end time scenario in Matthew 24, verse 7. The word nation in Greek is where we get the word ethnic. It's the Greek word ethnic. This means that Jesus was actually forecasting a time when ethnic groups would rise up against other ethnic groups. Have you turned on the news lately? Ethnic groups are rising up against one another. In fact, I don't know about you, but the question I like to ask people is, has there ever been a time when there was more ethnic conflict than we see in contemporary history? Not in my lifetime. Now, maybe you have. I know we had some trouble in the 60s and other times. But something seems to be different about all of this, at least in my mind. 
In the more recent past, such conflicts were notably localized, but today, ethnic conflict is spreading like a disease across the planet. It's not just in America. It's all over the globe. Increasing ethnic tensions and turmoil can be found in the streets of America, in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, and every part of the world. Now, you would think, that such conflicts, especially uh, uh, with evolving the, the races and our understanding of things, you would think that it would decrease as time moves forward, wouldn't you? You would think here in America that it would decrease. No, it's not decreasing. It is increasing. And God have mercy on those who are stirring this up in our nation because this, this influence is coming straight from the pit of hell. God loves all people. I don't care of, of the color of your skin or your background, where you live, where you don't live, what country you're from. God loves all people, and Christians love all people. Can I hear an amen on that? And yet, with all this that we know, and it's on the increase, and we, we see that multitudes of people have suffered bigotry and injustice and hardships for many years, some people have worked to change laws and bring about equal rights to all races. And yet racial conflict still seems to be escalating. There's another type of upheaval that almost from the beginning has been prevalent in the world. And I'm talking about the conflict that exists between religions. Now, you know, Christians have a hard enough time getting along. I'm of this faith. I'm of this denomination. I'm of the, you know, God loves all denominations. He loves all people. Hello, Christians. Your denomination, your beliefs are not superior to anybody else's. Of course, if you don't agree with me, then you're wrong. No. No one group has it all right. In fact, we all have a lot of great truth. Oh, I wish we'd get along better than we do. Amen. But this has been going on from the beginning. And really, I'm talking about major religions. One, of the, one example of this is becoming more and more predominant. And it is the conflict between Shiite Muslims and Sunni Muslims. Although both of these groups claim Islam as their faith, these groups are fiercely opposed to each other and they engage in murderous warfare against one another and the bloodbath between these two groups is horrific. I mean, they hate each other. And that's just one example. And the question I would ask, could this also be an example of the end-time ethnic conflict that Jesus was predicting when he said that ethnic groups would rise against ethnic group at the very end of the days. And you know I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't believe that it was true. Those who work in international affairs are well aware that these conflicts are getting worse. Whether it's radical tensions in the United States, or racial, I mean not radical, well radical too. Conflict in tribes in Africa. Muslim factions in the Middle East, antagonism between nations in Europe, or ethnic issues in other parts of the world. I mean, we just go on and on with this. Let me just go a little further. These conflicts are more difficult to resolve than in past years. It seems to all be leading to a less controlled, less predictable world. How many of you are seeing that? And that's exactly what Jesus said would happen. As power becomes more diffused and antagonism among regional powers intensifies, rendering resolutions uh, to these conflicts become even more complex. Now Paul told us these things were going to happen. I just thought I'd be a little better prepared. I preach it. Yet I'm finding I have to really right now, I have to take a deep breath and say, oh, take a drink of water and say, hello, Lord. And I have to get up and spend good quality time with the Lord. I find myself fretting over these world events. How about you? Am I, am I the only one? No, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. Because some of you wouldn't raise your hand. That needed to. I'm just picking at you a little. 
By the way, if you were to list all these ethnic conflicts that are occurring right now and you compiled them together, I'm telling you, you could take uh, page after page after page and, and you would have several pages of just one-liners about conflicts that are going on in the nations of the world. Now, Jesus prophesied the stirring of these ethnic groups, including racial, religious, and political groups, and factions in the very last days. Now, regardless of the cause, it is clear that these contentions are happening with greater frequency in our day. Are you with me on this? I'm, I'm, I'm leading us along here. The fact that these uprisings are occurring on a greater scale confirm Jesus' words. And not only do they confirm Jesus' words, they sound a clear signal that we are approaching the very end of the age. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, nation shall rise against nation. The word against in the Greek word is epi. It adds the idea of force. Jesus was forecasting a time when nations or ethnic groups would forcibly or violently rise up against other groups. Are we not seeing that? The word epi also means upon. And in this sense, it depicts one group trying to gain superiority over another. How many of you see the struggle going on in America? It's going on in America. It's going on all over the world. We've seen this in the Middle East. But how many you know it's raging and rising in various religions all across the world, including America? Who would have ever thought you would see the things you are seeing today in America? I, I, I'm watching less news right now, but I, I, I try to get the headlines. And I'm like, oh, help me, Lord. Oh, I'm not going there today, I promise you. <laughs> but I watch some things, and I'm like, man, that's creepy. And you, the only explanation for some of these ideologies and beliefs, this comes straight out of the pit of hell. Jesus' prophetic words in Matthew 24, verse 7, plainly tell us that nations will rise against nations. In other words, ethnic conflicts will escalate, and they will gather speed and proliferate around and across the globe as we race toward the close of the age. So folks, listen, I'm just... I'm trying to be a good pastor and just let you know what's coming so you can be prepared. And if you recall, when I began this series, I said, uh, Jesus didn't give us these things to scare us, but to prepare us. And I'll go ahead and give you my closing right now. If you get real close to Jesus and you stay real close to him, you stay close to the Heavenly Father, you're going to be just fine. It's going to be the folks who playing around that are going to have some problems. Now, we're all going to have challenges. Ooh, I'm almost getting to the end, and somebody said, I wish you would right now. No, I'm not going to do that just yet. Thank you, Lynn. Lynn's my cheerleader. How I many of you know these things that we're talking about is one of the signs that Jesus gave that believers would know that the end is near? Now again, what did I teach you last week? Jesus said, when you see these things, He said, don't go around all cast down, looking down. Oh. He said, look up. Lift up your heads. Now again, easier said than done. And Jesus knows that. But this is where the encouragement of brothers and sisters one to another is, is going to come into play. Folks, listen, if you're still a, long ra a lone ranger, Christian, you're, you're already in trouble. Listen to this, preacher. I've seen more lone rangers get picked off. You get out there by yourself, you get to play and you get to hearing the wrong voices. Little of this, little compromise here. You know, I'm just taking a little vacation, a little time off for Jesus. Sir, ma'am, you're already in great danger. Great danger. This preacher, in all my years, I've seen a lot of this. And you try to warn people. That's what Jesus is doing. Jesus is trying to warn us. These things are coming. Don't go find alternatives to help you through. But get close to me and get close to the body of Christ. Amen. Didn't all of you say amen on that one? 
But after Jesus told his disciples that nation shall rise against nation, he added, and kingdom shall rise against kingdom. Again, we see the word against used in this phrase from the Greek word epi, indicating force or a desire to take a superior dominant position over another. How many of you are seeing this in the world today? The word kingdoms could present the idea of nations, political parties, alliances, listen now, and even ideological factions maneuvering for superiority over the other at the very end of this age. Again, I know I sound like a broken record today. Forgive me. This is happening every single day in America. You watch this stuff and you say, what? We're seeing the clashing of nation against nation, ethnic group against ethnic group. We're seeing uh, political parties and alliance and ideologies. One is from the pit of hell clash with, with, with the light. There is a clashing going on in the spiritual realm. So, Christians, let's don't get all caught up in this stuff they're trying to feed us as they're trying to brainwash us. My heart was absolutely broken one evening this week, and I don't remember when it was. But I saw this thing play out on national television in such a graphic way. I mean, it was so clear and so graphic. And you could clearly see how the devil has manipulated people to buy into these ideologies and, and, and splitting the groups up. I mean, it was shocking to me. I was just like, wow. Hey, by the way, if you want to understand what Jesus was talking about, all you need to do is reflect on the political behavior we are seeing today. Some of you say, yeah, I used to watch that. Well, I hear you. Did you know that we may be witnessing the most uncivil politics in contemporary history? I think we're watching one party or affiliation not only try to gain superiority over the other, but they also seem to be trying to decimate one another in the process. These are the things that Jesus said would happen. And, and oh, I, I need to tell you this. Now, don't misunderstand me. I believe Christians should vote. If you're a Christian and you don't vote, I believe it's a sin. I believe it's a sin. A country that is established by God and has the type of government we have, to not vote is to sin. Don't, don't tell me what I used to hear one guy tell me. Well, God just puts in who he wants. No, we put them in or we let them get in. And, and elections have consequences. But here, I, even though they said, I'm going to vote and I'm going to keep voting. I've just voted in some of our local elections and you should too. Don't complain if you don't vote. Don't, don't you do it. I, don't you do it. I'll give you the stink eye look. <laughs> Show me your voter's card. Show it to me. Show me you voted. Right? So I think we're witnessing this. But it's really the clashing of one realm against another. One ideology against another ideology. As each tries to doom the other. They're scrambling now for superiority. Folks, listen. This is nothing less, I don't want to confuse you, than the spirit of Antichrist. It, the spirit of Antichrist wants to take uh, authority and control over the world. So first of all, he can crush uh, Christianity and crush the Jewish people. I got news for some of these countries that believe they're going to annihilate Israel. Boy, you better watch out. You need to read your Bible. Don't be threatening to destroy, not in this day and age, Israel with a nuclear bomb. Ooh, I feel all country today. God going to slap you upside the head, boy. I'm telling you, don't mess with Israel. They may be messing up. And they are, and they may have done a lot of dumb and stupid and sinful things, but they're still the apple of God's eye. 
And I'm telling you, God's going to turn His attention back to them. He's not through with them. All you Jew haters, you better get over it. If you hate Jewish people, you better get over it. Because your Messiah, God Himself, came in human flesh, and He came as a Jew. Have you ever wondered why a lot of the nations, they just hate the Jewish people. No one really knows why. Because the devil hates the Jewish nation. God created the Jewish nation. Boy, have they blown it. Not like the Christian community has blown it. God is patient, loving, and kind. He puts up with a lot of stuff from us. So if you're paying attention to the headlines today, you, you understand what I'm talking about. The public behavior of politicians and political parties has departed from the days of respectful disagreement into an ugly mess of intolerance. And not only that, mudslinging and outright lying and character assassination. Now listen, I, I need to move on here. But it amazes me how, I think politicians forget that we have television and things recorded. And last week they said this, and this week they're saying this, an outright lie. Either they could care less, or they're foolish. I think they could care less. And so, Steve said he thinks they're foolish. And what about the widespread weaponizing of the media to perpetuate this indecent assault? And if you do this, folks, you have a modern picture of kingdom rising against kingdom. That is what's going on. If you're wondering, if you've been asking yourself, what in the world is going on? What is going on in our beloved country of America? Well, I can tell you, kingdom is rising against kingdom. And Jesus prophesied in no uncertain terms that what would occur before he came are these exact things. He said they would happen. And we are seeing them unfold every day. Now, some of you are probably at this point saying, Pastor, have you got any good news for us today? You got, you got anything good to say? I, I sure do. I sure do. Here it is. God must have considered you a very, very special person to allow you to be alive at this time in history's moment. Come on. You ought to think about that. Don't, don't, don't go around saying, you know, I'm really not made for this time. I, 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 should, have been, I should have been in the 1900s or, or the late 1800s. That, I, I would have really fit in then. No, you wouldn't have. <laughs> Think you'd be an old pioneer out chopping wood and getting you a little log cabin thrown up. And about the first time you cut your finger, you'd say, where's the emergency room? There is no emergency room. Tape it up. <laughs> Forget it. Right? You're privileged. I know we don't think of it that way, but if we would start thinking of it this way, we would realize, that's, that's pretty special. Every day we are seeing prophecy fulfilled at a massive rate before our eyes every day. In fact, there's a verse in the Bible that says we are seeing now what the prophets of old yearn to see. Let me tell you, the prophets of old, Elijah and all the, Isaiah, uh, Joel, all those prophets, they knew that these things were coming and they wanted to see them. Guess what? You are here and you not only get to see them, but there is a purpose for you being here. Well, what is it, Pastor? I feel like I'm suffering. Well, let me tell you your primary reason for here. This is going to give you goosebumps. I'm telling you, it's going to give you goosebumps, so get ready. You and I are here to fulfill God's most important assignment given to anyone in human history. Here it is. We are called, this is going to get you now, the gospel out to the entire world. Oh, I thought you were going to give me goosebumps. If you're full of the Holy Spirit and you understand the time, it does excite you. But by looking at some of your faces, I don't think very many of you are excited. <laughs> Listen now. This can give you some even better news right now. 
I probably shouldn't even mention this. You know, anytime you're preaching, you say, I probably shouldn't mention that. That's a good sign. You probably shouldn't. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to read Matthew 24, verses 13 and 14. And I'm going to be a good young preacher, or a preacher man today, and not say what I want to. You see, I'm working through this thing. I told you about working through your salvation. Here it is. But listen, Jesus said, But to the one who endures to the end will be saved. What do you mean endure? I'm an American. Endure? Yeah. Endure. You don't want me to give you the definition of that in the Greek, so I'm not going to do it. Basically, it just means you're going to have to have some fortitude, and you're going to have to persevere in the days ahead. Man, it's quiet now. Woo! Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. In other words, so they have an opportunity to be saved and born again. And then the end will come. Man, I could mess with some doctrine right now, but I, I'm not going to. You see, I'm moving kind of slow because I want to obey the Lord. Amen. Folks, why are you here? You're here... To get the gospel out to the whole world. Me, every single one of you. Every one of you. That's why you're here. Well, I don't believe I know how to do that. Well, hang on, I'll tell you how. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. Here's what Jesus said. He said, see to it that you are not troubled. Y'all remember that? He said, for all these things must come to pass, and the end is not yet. Folks, I'm going to tell you one thing I've been endeavoring to do, and we've been endeavoring to. I have been endeavoring to saturate this church with this truth and making every attempt possible to get you equipped to fulfill the mission and why you are here right now. Starting all the way back with our connect group. Y'all remember we talked about your purposes and we mentioned one about your mission. And I encouraged everybody, make sure you go to your connect group and hear this. And I encourage you to get your book and I encourage you to read. If you don't read anything else, read purpose number five. Don't raise your hand. How many of you did it? It's not too late. And then we followed that up with... Uh, the six weeks uh, seri series, one of the best we've ever presented in our small groups, connect groups, entitled Tell Someone. One of the best presentations we've ever had in this year. I hope you've been going to your connect group and learning how to tell someone from one of the greatest experts on that issue, Greg Laurie, in America. If you haven't, I'm going to ask Pam and Henry to please stand up. Come on, Henry, you didn't know I was going to call you out. They, uh, they've been on vacation, so therefore they had to postpone starting their group. So look around, everybody wave at Pam and Henry. Pam, Henry, I'm inviting the whole church to your house on Friday nights. If you want to get in on this, they've got a group. It's, I mean, it's out in the boondocks. You'll, you'll have to, the GPS won't even get you there. You'll have to talk to them. No, I'm teasing. It's not. They've got a great place. They've got a big living room and a big eating area. Seriously, if you have not been able to attend, they meet on Friday nights. Go and get this. And plus, this Wednesday, I am finishing up Finding the Rock 401, Discovering Your Mission. So I have been endeavoring. By the way, you can get those online. I have been endeavoring. We have been endeavoring to saturate this church with this single truth. And this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. And then the end is coming. Don't, don't say, I don't know why I'm here. I know. I hear it all the time. I know God's got a purpose for me being here. I just don't know what it is. You're a hickory head. Have y'all ever tried to break open a hickory nut? That squirrel can, but you can't, even with a sledgehammer. This is why you're here. And I got too many troubles, Pastor. This is why you're here. 
I don't feel led. This is why you are here. We, we, we decided to get the bucket of lead out again. Some of you have been here a long time. We had a, we had a bucket of lead, and it's still over in this room. I'm going to get it back out. And for those of you who don't feel lead, we're going to give you a piece of lead so you can feel lead. I'm trying to make this kind of lighthearted, but I'm serious. Folks, Jesus did not leave me and you here to sit, soak, and sour. You still on that series, Pastor? Yes! Forgive me. I yelled a little bit there. Now, I don't think I could make it with that lens exhortation there. <laughs> Folks, he left us here to work as ambassadors for his kingdom. Pastor, you don't understand. I'm having all kinds of problems. Join the party. If you're moving on for Jesus, get ready. You should be proud of this fact. When you start getting attacked by the evil one on a regular basis, that means you've gotten hell's attention. If right now you're just floating through life doing your own thing, partying and doing all that stuff, and yeah, everything's great, let me tell you, you should be scared. But you should feel honored if you're getting hell's attention. But don't you let hell win. Don't you let hell beat you down. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in this world. Amen. Y'all need some more goosebumps? <laughs> Bring it. Now i got some women preaching back with me. I got it, man. Matthew 24, 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, coronavirus. That's what that word means in the Greek. Uh, viruses and diseases, unknown diseases. And earthquakes in various places. It's not going to be going on everywhere, folks. But it is going to be going on in the world. Now, in all sincerity... Should these predictions frighten us? Should these predictions cause us to be troubled, stirred up, agitated, anxious, or even upset? The answer to that is no. But the truth of the matter is, I have been a little bit, being real. I've been agitated lately, and I'm... It's not good. I've been upset about some things, but I'm recognizing that's not good. Because here's the reality. Regardless what has transpired in the world, at any given season in history, God's people have always been preserved. You're going to be preserved and you're going to be taken care of. It will be no different for believers in the last days who embrace their better covenant which was established upon better promises. Let me read it to you. Hebrews 8 and 6. But now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the Old Priesthood or the Old Testament. For he is the one who mediates for us a better covenant with God based upon better promises. Because of what Jesus has done, folks, we've, we've got it pretty good. You see, our faith and trust in Christ's words and careful attention to His leading will hold us steady through any storm of scarcity that affects our society, our global financial markets in this time and age that we live in. I think you're taking a deep breath there. Come on, Pastor. If you believe what I'm saying, just say amen. amen. That was a weak amen, so I'm going to preach another 30 minutes. <laughs> if you believe what I'm saying, say amen. amen. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Listen now, Jesus said, see that you are not troubled. See that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. Be not panicked. Be not panicked. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. But rather, but rather, stay focused. Here's the focus. 
And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. I'm going to ask you, are you going to do your part? You're going to let Jesus develop you and get you over your fears and your concerns about talking about him? All these resources we've talked about can help you. You can go to Finding Your Rock 401. It will help you. And I promise you, not immediately, but in the early part of this summer, I'm going to be preaching a series. I guarantee you, it's going to waken people up. We're going to be awakened. And it's going to put some fire in us and some urgency in us. Folks, people all around us, I mean, they are dying literally and going to hell. See, we don't understand hell. There's not any preaching on it anymore. We don't understand how horrific it is and how real it is. And preachers better get busy preaching it. Let's pray. Father, we... Lord, I just pause and say thank you, Lord. You, I, I truly believe what I've said, that you must think we're very special people to be born in this time, Lord. I don't believe any human being is an accident. I don't believe just because parents may look at each other and say, Oops, Lord, you, you planned us. There are no oops babies. Only oops parents. But you ordained us, God. And so that means you have a purpose and a plan for our lives. Father, I'm asking you to energize your people, encourage your people, Lord. Father, if we become apathetic or discouraged or we've given up, Father, rejuvenate us. Lord, fill us up with your presence again. Let us see Jesus for who he is and what he's done for us. And help us, Lord, to be willing to organize our lives. Lord, if we've got all too much in our schedule that we don't have time to reach one another and time to be in a connect group, Lord, help us. We want to be in your will and we want to have your priority in our lives. God, we thank you that we are overcomers. In fact, Paul said we are more than overcomers because of Christ who dwells in us. Thank you, Jesus. Strengthen your people today in Jesus' name.